Watching Your Thoughts September 10th, 1979 You mustn't think the practice for the total removal of the gilesas from your jitta to be too hard for you, because that would be contrary to the Lord Buddha's Tabma teaching that teaches you to exert yourself, endure, and persevere. This kind of thinking is the work of the Gelesas, which have been opposing the Tamma teachings from time immemorial. When you start to exert yourself in your practice, they will oppose the Tamma and make you weak and discouraged. They will come up with various tricks to make your jitta weak and irresolute in order to keep you under their control. You, as a Tamma practitioner, must be constantly mindful of your thoughts to see if they are opposing or following the Tamma teaching. This is the crucial aspect of your practice. You have to always be rational and always watch your thoughts or Sankara. There are two kinds of Sankara. The Sankara that opposes the Tamma teaching will destroy you, the truth, and the Tamma. They are Samudaya, the origin of suffering. The Sankara that follows the Tamma teaching will destroy the Kilesas. They are Magga, the path of practice leading to the disbanding of pain and suffering. You have to always watch your thoughts that your Jitta constantly generates. It is similar to a football that is being kicked back and forth. How can your Jitta remain still? It's constantly being surrounded by the Kilesas, which are like football players that keep kicking your jitta to constantly think. It is therefore necessary to apply the Tamma teaching with your strenuous exertion, endurance, and perseverance to correct the harm done by the Gilesas. If you can't persevere and endure, then you're not totally committed to your task. If you don't strive, then you're not following the Lord Buddha, your teacher. To be a good human being, you have to strive with your diligent effort to faithfully follow the Tamma teaching, because this is the right kind of endeavor. If you have to endure pain to achieve it, you must willingly put up with it. You're born in a world that is full of pain, and you're in the midst of it. It's not possible to separate yourself from this pain, especially the emotional or mental pain, which is a lot more painful than the physical pain. Your mental pleasure and pain are more profound than your physical pleasure and pain. In fact, the body never generates any pleasure. It only generates pain when it becomes ill. When it's not sick, it doesn't produce any pleasure. It only generates pain when it becomes sick, and the pain can be extremely excruciating. If you haven't practiced any mental development before, you'll be consumed by this pain. There will be two kinds of pain happening at the same time, the physical and the mental pain. Mental pleasure and pain are very obvious and profound. When you experience emotional pleasure, it will make you joyful and happy, whether it's mundane or spiritual. I can't really say that the body generates any pleasure. To me, it only generates pain. When the body is normal and healthy, it doesn't produce any pleasure at all. But when the bodily pain appears, it really shows itself. The intensity of pain corresponds to the intensity of the illness. The jitta then loses its mindfulness and clings to the body due to its own delusion. This is like trying to lift a mountain and roll it over. How can this be possible? The true nature of the body, which is anitsang, dukkang, and anatta, is all over the body. It's a lot bigger than a mountain. How can you defy it? You should instead investigate to see the body's true nature. The jitta will then be able to free itself from its attachment to the body and free itself from physical and mental pain. As a practitioner, you have to constantly investigate and analyze and always watch over your jitta, which will become your most valuable possession after it has been trained and developed. If it hasn't yet exhibited any worthwhile or exceptional capability, it's because it's being covered with the defilements of greed, hatred, and delusion. For this reason, it's necessary to practice mental development with your utmost ability and energy to cleanse them away. The jitta is the one that takes up birth, aging, illness, and death, the one that ceaselessly wanders in the samsara vakta, and the one that experiences pleasure and pain. 
It's this jitta that will excel after it has been purified to become the absolute truth and be completely free from all worries. The past will converge into the present. The future will also be clearly seen in the present. This purified jitta will be complete, perfect, contented, most sublime, and have no craving for the past or the future. Therefore, the jitta should be relentlessly and diligently trained, developed, cleansed, and purified until it becomes a pure jitta. Sati or mindfulness is absolutely vital. I have said this many times before. In all of the Tama talks that I have given, I have always emphasized sati because it's indispensable for your practice. Whatever you do, if you have no sati, you will fail, especially in your practice. Sati is absolutely necessary. You have to be vigilant, careful, and cautious, constantly maintaining your sati until it becomes sampajanya or alertness. Sati means mindfulness. When you continually establish mindfulness, it becomes sampajanya. This is the second level of sati. The third level is the automatic or always-on sati. When you get to this level, you don't have to establish it because it's ever-present. From the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep, you will never be absent-minded and leave your jitta exposed for the gelezes to attack it. That's why it's called automatic sati, or during the time of the Lord Buddha, Mahasati. Mahasati and Mahapanya are inseparable. You'll see this in your practice. As soon as sati appears, banya will follow immediately behind. Both of them will be tracking the sankhara that thinks and conceptualizes, not to mention the visual objects, sounds, aromas, flavors, and tactile sensations that come into contact with the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and body, which are coarser phenomena. The jitta's thinking won't be able to slip away from this automatic sati that will become aware as soon as the jitta starts to think. Automatic banya will follow right behind, curbing and restraining it right away, except when the jitta is investigating for insight and detachment. Banya will let the jitta continue investigating. At this stage, whatever appears in the jitta will immediately disappear. As soon as a thought appears, it will immediately disappear. Just like the visual objects, sounds, aromas, flavors, and tactile sensations that come into contact with the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and body. You can't eliminate them. All you have to do is to know their true nature and be detached from them. It's the same with the five kantas. Eventually, Sati and Banya will learn the true nature of Sankara, which is very subtle, and Sanya, which is even more subtle. They're extremely subtle because they are mental phenomena, or nama tamma. As soon as they arise, sati and banya will know right away as a result of continual developing of sati and investigating with banya, which will gradually become more skillful without any doubt. This is the path traversed by the Lord Buddha and his noble disciples in freeing themselves from dukkha. This was the way they practiced. They never became discouraged or relented in their exertion. Therefore, you who are a follower of the Lord Buddha practicing mental development, and who have taken up the robe and are striving for freedom from Dukkha, must faithfully follow this path. You must not be discouraged or relent. You must face up to any kind of Dukkha as you strive to gradually eliminate the Gilesas from your Jitta, we are all subject to Dukkha, because this is the world of Dukkha, the world of Anitsang Dukkhang and Anatta. Wherever you are, you can never escape from experiencing the Anitsang Dukkhang and Anatta of the body or the Jitta. You are not shielded from the Anitsang Dukkhang and Anatta, so how can you not experience Dukkha? Even when you're not exerting effort in your practice, you'll still have to undergo Dukkha, so it's better to experience dukkha while you're exerting effort than to suffer while you're doing nothing, which doesn't do you any good. As a practitioner of mental development, you must really exert and commit yourself to the practice. The Magga, Pala, and Nibbana are in your jitta. You mustn't think that they are somewhere else. The dukkha in your jitta is much more excruciating than the dukkha in your body. What is Samudaya? It is craving for sensuality, craving for becoming, and craving for non-becoming. 
Where does it appear? It appears in the chitta. Its source is in the chitta. It uses the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind as its tools. It is therefore necessary to investigate the physical and mental phenomena that the chitta is attached to. Find out why the chitta is obsessed with them. If you're attached to the body, then you must analyze the body until you see clearly its true nature, lose your obsession for it, and detach from it. What are the bodies of men and women really like? You have to look at the hair of the head, hair of the body, nails, teeth, skin, flesh, sinews, bones, and the other internal organs, starting from the outside and then going inside. You have to look at the truth. You must constantly and relentlessly investigate with your sati and banya these thirty-two body parts until their true nature is seen. You must not blindly investigate, because this is not the way the Lord Buddha and the sages investigated. After you have seen the body's true nature, your delusion and attachment to the body will be eliminated. What's the use of clinging to them with your delusion? This is the way to investigate. I'm demonstrating this method of investigating the body as an example. You have to adapt it to suit your preference. You can either investigate your body or someone else's body. This will not be wrong, because it's mugga, the path to the cessation of dukkha. When you're attached to someone else's body, you will love or hate it. This is samudaya, the origin of dukkha. The most important part of your practice is the application of your diligent effort. You must not speculate about Magga, Pala, and Nibbana, or about the time and place that you will become enlightened. When the Gilesas spring into action, they pay no attention to the time and place. They are in your jitta, where you have to focus your attention. The Gilesas are like fire that must be extinguished whenever they appear. Don't be concerned with the time and place. Suffering and the origin of suffering are in your jitta. Suffering is a mental condition, while the pain in your body is a physical condition. Samudaya, the origin of suffering, is a mental condition. It is gama tanha, craving for sensuality, pawa tanha, craving for becoming, and vipawa tanha, craving for not becoming. Having been born, you don't want to die. How is this possible? This is vipawa tanha, craving for not becoming. These three kinds of cravings are in your jitta. Nirota, the cessation of suffering, is the product of magga. This cessation of dukkha is a gradual one, corresponding to the strength of the magga, the eightfold path consisting of sati, banya, and the other path factors that will gradually eliminate the gilesas. Nirota, the cessation of suffering that is created by the gilesas, will gradually appear. When the magga becomes stronger, more gilesas will be eliminated. You'll see the gilesas being eradicated from the chitta as you do sitting or walking meditation. Satipanya will constantly and relentlessly keep on eliminating the gilesas, except when you take a rest or when you go into samadhi. This is the only time when satipanya of this level will not be working. But as soon as you stop resting, satipanya will keep on working, constantly attacking the gilesas, tanha, and asava, until they are entirely removed from the jitta. Therefore, you should diligently keep on developing Satipanya to gradually eliminate the Gilesas from your jitta until you get to the point where you'll have to search for them. These are the very subtle Gilesas. When Satipanya becomes very powerful, the Gilesas will cower and go into hiding. But wherever they hide, they will be discovered by Satipanya that is constantly searching for them. Eventually, they will all be destroyed. The Gilesas are very overwhelming in the beginning stages of practice. Look at all the visual objects and sounds, for example. They are all over the world. You're attached to them because you're affected by them. You're affected by the good and the bad sounds, the sounds of praise and criticism. You're also attached to the aromas, flavors, and tactile sensations. For this reason, the Gilesas are said to be all over the universe. But when you investigate, 
you'll see that it's the flow of your thoughts that is attached to these sense objects by your mistaken or unfounded opinions or ideas. After you've investigated and seen their true nature, the flow of your thoughts will withdraw into the jitta. The scope of your investigation that encompasses the entire world will become narrower. It was the Gelesis that expanded the scope of your investigation. You have to round up the Gelesis into the five Kanthas by letting go of all the sense objects with your Satipanya. After you've done this, you won't have to investigate the visual objects, sounds, aromas, flavors, and tactile sensations anymore because you've seen their true nature and let go of your attachment. Why do any more investigation when you already know what they really are and are no longer attached to them or have any mistaken opinion about them? The one who has attachment and unfounded ideas about them is the jitta, which has now disengaged from them and let go of them. So what is the use of investigating them anymore? The investigation will now turn to the body, which is one of the five kandhas. You have to investigate to see its true nature. You can investigate any part of the body that you like until you see the three characteristics of anittang, dukkang, and anatta. You can investigate any one of these three characteristics because it will be like investigating all three of them since they are all interrelated. When you have seen with banya, as taught by the Lord Buddha, the true nature of any individual part of the body, you will have seen the rest of the body. Then. How can you be attached to this body? What is the use of being attached to the bone, skin, and flesh? Is it really an animal or a human being? Is it really I or mine? The flesh is just flesh. The bones are just bones. The sinews are just sinews. The skin is just skin. This body will eventually become bloated and decomposed. So how can this rotting and bloating body be you? How can it be I or mine? It will eventually disintegrate into the four elements of earth, water, air, and fire. How can it be I? If it's made up of the earth, water, air, and fire elements, why do you take it as yourself? You have to investigate until you see it very clearly with your jitta. You have to investigate until you see it very clearly with your jitta. The Lord Buddha called this kind of seeing true panya. It's the same way with pain. To investigate the kavedana or pain, you have to be fearless and daring. Wherever it arises, that's where you have to continuously and mindfully probe. If you have to die, let it happen. This world is a cemetery, a world of birth and death. If you should die while sitting in meditation, let it happen. There is no need to have the other monks chant the Kuzala Thamma or wisdom for you, because you are right now developing the Kuzala Thamma yourself. So, why bother the other monks to do it for you when you can do it yourself? You must investigate the nature of pain. Don't be afraid. No matter how severe the pain might be, you must not wish it to go away. You must really investigate to see the truth. You have to clearly see the face of pain. See it as it really is. You have to see pain as just pain because it's nothing more than that. You will then see the jitta that is being entangled with this pain. You must now investigate until you see the jitta is just the jitta, pain is just pain, and the body is just the body. They are just as they are, separated from one another. When there are no mistaken or unfounded opinions or ideas about the body, the pain, and the jitta, you will see their true nature. When you see them just as they are, then the jitta won't be troubled or shaken. No matter how severe the pain might be, you won't have any qualms because you've already understood it with banya. You'll see more clearly the nature of feeling as banya moves deeper into the jitta. Notice, for instance, sulkavedana, or bliss. When the jitta becomes very subtle, there will mostly be bliss, which will stand out very distinctly. You must see the true nature of this bliss. You mustn't think that pain is the only form of suffering, because if you are attached to bliss, this is Sambudaya, the cause of suffering. You have to analyze until seeing this clearly. You probably have never heard before that attachment to bliss is a cause of suffering. The Gilesas that create this suffering are called Sambudaya. 
When the jitta becomes attached to this mental bliss, this is samudaya. You have to investigate with your inexhaustible banya to see this clearly. Banya knows this subtle kind of bliss and also knows this subtle kind of dissatisfaction. The investigation of the four mental phenomena, or nama kantas, vedana, sanya, sankara, and vinyarna, can be done with any one of the four phenomena because they all have a similar nature. It isn't necessary to investigate all four, but the phenomenon that you're investigating must be live, happening now. When you're investigating Vedana, you will also be investigating Sanya, Sankara, and Vinyarna. After you've repeatedly investigated, you'll be able to detach from them, just like you've detached from the body. You have to investigate all three feelings, good, bad, and neutral, until you stop clinging to them. You will then also stop clinging to sanya, sankara, and vinyarna, which perpetually rise and cease. How can you consider them to be a self, a human being, or an animal? They're just phenomena that rise and cease in the jitta. This is seeing with banya. You have to keep on investigating until the gelesas run out of places to hide. When they are hiding places, which are the visual objects, sounds, aromas, flavors, and tactile sensations, have all been destroyed, they will then hide behind the five kantas. So you have to search for them in the five kantas and destroy them with the tapa tamma, the fire of tamma, beginning with the body. When you have investigated until seeing the body's true nature, you will realize that its nature is like the sense objects and see that it is made up of the four elements. How then can you become attached to it when it's just a phenomenon? When you see this with banya, you will immediately let go of it. Sanya, sankara, and vinyarna are just phenomena that continuously appear and disappear. That's the way they are, and they don't know what they are. It's you who incorrectly define them and become attached to them. When Banya has investigated until their true nature is clearly seen, you will let go of them. You will let go of Ropa, Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, and Vinyarna. What you haven't let go of yet is the Jitta. The Gilesas now only have the Jitta under their control. They can't go outside because all the exits have been blocked. They can no longer exit through the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and body because they have been blocked by Banya. They can no longer exit through the Ropa, Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, and Vinyarna by assuming them to be I or mine, because they have also been blocked by Banya. The Banya of this level is the automatic Banya. When the Gilesas have no other place to go, they go back to their nest where they rule the Vartajaka, the cycle of birth, death, and rebirth, or the Vakta Jitta, which still revolves around the cycle of birth, death, and rebirth. Do you understand? The Gelesa inside this Vakta Jitta is Avidya. All the rest of the Gelesas have been neutralized. All their exits have been blocked. All that is left to them is the Jitta, where you will have to probe. This is where the king of the Gelesas resides. Banya must now concentrate all of its investigating prowess at the jitta to reveal the anittang, dukkang, and anatta hidden in the jitta, just like the way it investigated all the other phenomena, or sapawa tammas. The only difference is that this one is more subtle than all the other sapawa tammas. You must not cling to the jitta. Should it be destroyed, let it happen. You must now treat the jitta like a football and kick it very hard. Should the jitta be crushed by your investigation, let it happen. Don't cherish it. You must kick it hard. Whatever is zammati or conjured into being by the jitta is anittang, dukkang, and anatta, and will naturally disappear. The purified jitta will not be tainted with anittang, dukkang, and anatta. It will be separated from everything. This jitta has attained to freedom. It's right here. The Magga, Pala, and Nibbana are realized right here. You don't realize them at that place or at that time, which is mere speculation and a waste of time. You must now concentrate your investigation right here. The first noble truth, Dukkha Sadda, and the second noble truth, Samudaya Sadda, that shroud the jitta are in the jitta. 
The fourth noble truth, the Magga, the tool that eliminates the Dukkha and Samudaya, is also right here. It consists of Sati Samati and Banya. Nirotha, the cessation of Dukkha, is the outcome of Magga. When you've eliminated Samudaya, Dukkha will cease. The cessation of Dukkha is called Nirotha. When the time comes for total elimination, you mustn't leave behind any trace of Samadhi or anything conjured into being by the Jitta. If the Jitta should be destroyed because it can't withstand your scrutiny, let it be. But the Jitta won't be destroyed. It is Avedda or Samadhi or Anitsang Dukkang and Anatta that will be eliminated. The Lord Buddha said, you have to let go of good and evil. You have to do it right here in the Jitta. It was here where the Lord Buddha became enlightened, terminated rebirth, eliminated the Gilesas, Tanha, and Asava, and became noble and the world's greatest teacher. It was the same way with all the noble disciples. They became enlightened by following the Tamma teaching, which is the only thing that the Gilesas are afraid of. That's why when you practice, the Gilesas will always oppose you, resist you, and hypnotize you to make you weak. If the Gilesas are doing this to my students, it will be a cause for concern. There are many of them here, and they are increasing every day. I really am worried about your practice. When there are too many students, the quality of practice will be diluted. When there are very few, it will be highly concentrated. You must not relent in your practice. If you want to eliminate the Gilesas and you want freedom and Nibbana, you must always look at the Gilesas as your enemy. You also have to closely watch your Jitta. If you do this, you won't be disappointed. Your Jitta has always been the right location to do your practice because the Gilesas are in your Jitta and are all harmful. Only the Tamma teaching can neutralize the Gilesas. Nothing else can, because the Gilesas are not afraid of anything else. That's why you have to strive in your practice. Be vigilant and mindful of the Gilesas that will resist the Tamma teaching and terminate your practice.